Hello and welcome to Oathbreaking News, your Oathbreaker news source brought to you by the Signature Spellbomb. On today's show, we will be discussing the 515 2020 Vintage Legacy and Broadband announcements and the Love Your LGS promotion and how this news will affect Magic the Gathering and the Oathbreaker format. Just a quick reminder, if you like what we do, then please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. So, we have a lot to talk about from yesterday. On 5-15-2020, Wizards of the Coast posted a banned and restricted announcement article written by Ian Duke. This article explained the newly banned cards and why they are receiving the end of the band hammer. The bans will go into full effect on the following dates, and the following formats will be affected. Vintage, Legacy, and Brawl. Let's go through each format and break down the changes and why Watsi felt the need to make these changes to the formats. In Vintage, they are banning Lutris of the Dream Den. Watsi had the following to say concerning this ban. In this week's following release of Ikoria, Layers of Behemoth on Magic Online, we've observed a rise in the popularity and win rate of Vintage decks using Lutris of the Dream Den as a companion. Because of the nature of Vintage's wide card pool and powerful restricted cards, the deck building cost imposed by Lutris is less restrictive relative to the payoff of having Lutris as a companion. As a result, the win rates of several archetypes using Lutris have surpassed 55% in Magic Online League play, and collective decks using Lutris are representing too large of a portion of the metagame with no indication of a shift away from this trend. Therefore, Lutris of the Dream Den is banned in Vintage. We recognize that it is a rare occurrence to ban a card for balance reasons in Vintage rather than restricting it, but this is a unique case where restricting Lutris wouldn't affect its usage as a companion, which is the primary motivation for making this change. Moving on, in Legacy the following cards will be banned, again Lutris of the Dream Den, and Zerta the Dawn Waker. Ian Duke, in this article, had the following to say about Lutris's banning in Legacy. As in Vintage, the wide card pool of powerful, low-cost mana permanents in Legacy makes the power level of using Lutris of the Dream Den as a companion not commiserate to, to the deck-building cost. Several archetypes that were already strong, including Delver variants, have incorporated the use of Lutris as a companion while necessitating relatively few deck building changes. Collectively, Lutris decks represent an increasingly large portion of the metagame, with several variants maintaining win rates above 55% in Magic Online League play. Matchup data indicates that the metagame forces alone aren't sufficient to keep these decks in check, so we are choosing to ban Lutris the Dream Den in Legacy. In addition, we're seeing very high win rates among decks using Zerta the Dawn Waker as a companion in combination with Grim Monolith. While not yet widely played, Magic Online metagame data indicates that these decks would become problematic in both win rate and metagame share. Therefore, we're taking the additional step of banning Zerta the Dawn Waker in Legacy. Now, moving on to Brawl. In Brawl, they are banning the following cards. Dranith the Magistrate and Wynota, Joiner of Forces. Here's what Watsi had to say about Dranith Magistrate. Part of our philosophy for Brawl is that it shouldn't be easy for a single card to completely shut down a wide class of commanders. An example of us acting on this philosophy in the past was banning Sorcerer's Spyglass. We feel Dranith Magistrate falls into this category and generally takes away from the fun and self-expression that come with building around a commander in Brawl, so we are banning it. As far as Winota is concerned, Watsi had the following to say. <clears throat> On the balance side of things, we are seeing that high win rate of decks using Winota Joiner Forces as a commander are leading to increased play rates and reducing diversity of the play experience for Brawl players. While we're generally more tolerant of win rate outliers in Brawl than in other formats with a more competitive spirit behind them, we're choosing to make this change here in order to open up more viable choices for self-expression in the Brawl metagame. 
The article by Ian Duke went on to briefly discuss other formats, but WotC is waiting to see exactly how new Aquaria cards will affect Standard, Modern, and Pioneer before moving forward. It is my opinion that they are aware of the problematic nature of companions and new Ikoria cards and what they bring to the game, and rather than do multiple bans over the course of time that will upset many more players as their decks are picked apart like carrion one card at a time, it would be best to rip off the band-aid and deal with all the problems at once. At this time, the Oathbreaker Rules Committee has not made any additional rulings concerning banning any Ikoria cards at this time, so you now be asking why we chose to cover these bans in this episode. It is because the affected formats are either eternal formats, like Oathbreaker, or include the commander mechanic, much like our own format. It is important for the health of your playgroup to understand what they are comfortable playing with. Hell, in my playgroup we have a 5 color Urza Oathbreaker deck and a Bob Oathbreaker deck that use the Uncommanders. If your playgroup is okay, then that is fine. However, many of these cards are problematic enough at this time that WotC has decided to remove them from their affected formats for the health of the game. So please keep that in mind. If you are interested in more information about the bannings, I will post a link in the description. Next, I would like to briefly discuss the Love Your LSG promotion. Yesterday on 5-18-2020, Wizards of the Coast announced that they would be providing additional promos to help local gaming stores during these trying times. Participating stores will be receiving free mystery boosters that they can sell to help their businesses, as well as full art promos they will be handing out to people who purchase product. Mitch at the Commander's Quarter covered this topic in great detail, so please check it out there. I have posted a link to the video and the Commander Quarter's channel in the description. Please tell Mitch I sent you. Now that we have provided you with information and our opinion, give us your thoughts. We want to hear what you think about this episode and of the channel in the comments below. Again, if you enjoy the video and want to support the channel, then please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to see our updated Oathbreaking News episodes. We have merchandise. If you want to show your support, please see the link in the description. We have new Veraska themed merchandise in our shop. If you want to support the channel directly, please consider becoming a patron. You can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash signature spellbomb. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I'll be back with more headlines.